Okay, so here is 1.7, day one. Um, it's about the combination of functions, which is adding, and subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, those types of things, and combining two different functions together. We're going to talk a lot about domain. Um, also keep in mind that this is a two-day lesson. The next session is a question and answer period, so do the lesson one day, and then questions and answers the next day. And there's the assignment. Okay. We've talked about this a lot this year, that um, you cannot divide anything by zero, and you cannot take the square root of a negative number within the realm of real numbers. And um, those two things will come into play again today, because those are the values that we will have to exclude from domains. <coughs> so, for example, if you have a polynomial like this, where you don't have any dividing, and you don't have any square roots, then you're pretty much safe to say, yep, domain is all real numbers, from negative infinity to positive infinity, and this is the way we're going to write our answers in interval notation. However, if you have a domain like this, uh, uh, or a denominator, a fraction, like this, um, you're going to need to consider what values x cannot be. Well, obviously, if you square 7 and subtract 49, you get 0, or if you square negative 7 and subtract 49, you get 0. Um, so x cannot be 7 and negative 7. So if you look at that as a number line, okay, and you say negative 7 can't be included and positive 7 can't be included, you put little empty circles there, for example. You could do that, or you could put parentheses on both sides, but I put empty circles um, just to emphasize, again, that this is not included for each one of them. Um, if you do that, you can see that it chops up the number line into three sections. This section from negative infinity to negative 7, right here, left to right. The middle section, left to right, being negative 7 to positive 7. And the right-hand section from negative 7 to positive infinity. Now, if you write those three intervals, again, because the endpoint's not included, we use parentheses. And then you want to talk about all of them together being the domain, you, you use union symbols in between to finish your notation. And that's the domain of g of x. h of x, on the other hand, is a square root. Now, obviously, a square root cannot be negative. It has to be greater than or equal to 0. So to figure out all the, the values in the domain, we're going to state it in the positive. We're going to say all of this underneath the radical has to be greater than or equal to 0. So all the x's that fulfill this, class, this requirement would be in the domain. So. Uh, simplifying here, we would get all x's that are greater than or e equal to 3 would be in our domain. So if I graph that out, all x's greater than or equal to 3, that would be 3 on the left side and then up to positive infinity on the right. And we would include 3 with a bracket because it's equal to 3 in our uh, set notation. So once we've graphed it out, on the left side we have a 3 with a bracket, on the right side we have positive infinity. Now, it gets a little trickier when we combine things together. Finding the domain of that function, you can see we have both a square root and um, a fraction. So we have to kind of consider the fact that there are two things going on here. So first, let's consider the square root. The square root of x minus 2 cannot be uh, negative, which means that basically it cannot, it has to be greater than or equal to 0, or whatever those values are inside. So, simplifying gives us a domain for all x's that are greater than or equal to 2. Okay, that's just for this part. That's the limitation only created by the square root on top. Now let's look and see what kind of limitations the bottom part uh, uh, presents to us. Uh, the bottom polynomial, right here, I factored, and if, if you set each part equal to 0, you get x equals 3 and x equals 2 as values that you cannot use. Essentially, x cannot be 3 and x cannot be 2. They must be excluded from the domain. So, if you start with this domain of all x's that are greater than 2, and then you cut out the 2, or sorry, greater than or equal to, and you cut out the 2 and you cut out the 3 as further limiting, you really basically have this. You have a number line that's shaded from 2 to positive infinity except for 2 and except for 3. I always like to graph things because I think it really clarifies everything pretty well. Um, 
when you make a graph, you can actually see the intervals that you're talking about from uh, this little section here and this little section here. You can actually see that there are two of them. And that directly correlates to how you write your answer. So if you have this little section here from 2 to 3, but not including the ends, that would look like this, parenthesis 2, comma 3, parenthesis. And then the other one, again, you'd not include the 3. On the left side, you'd have a 3. And on the right side, you'd have positive infinity. So 3 to positive infinity, again, not including the 3 with a parenthesis. And then if you wanted to join those two as a total amount of your domain, uh, you would put a union symbol in between. Now when you combine functions, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, if you want to add f and g, that's what it looks like, f plus g in parentheses and then an x. You're not multiplying, you're adding. So if you add f plus g, it would look like this. I really didn't need the parentheses here, I was just emphasizing this is f and this is g. And then your final uh, domain would be the intersection of the previous two domains. So if your domain for f and domain for g are both all real numbers, then the intersection of those two, which means what do those two have in common, would be also all real numbers. Again, we're going to write those in interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity, not r. Um, if you're subtracting here, we do need our parentheses because remember, subtracting a binomial, you'll have to distribute the negative through those two terms. And then I get this. And again, the domain is pretty easy. I simply am finding um, intersection of the original domain. So the domain of f is all real numbers. Again, because that's just a simple polynomial. No fractions, no radicals. And the domain of g, all real numbers. Again, no fractions and no radicals, so there's no limiting factors. And the intersection of those two, again, would be simply all real numbers. <clears throat> Here you can see what happens when we multiply them together. You get a large polynomial like that. Again, the intersection of the original two is the same. Now, when you divide, it gets a little trickier. Dividing these, we can't really simplify. What we can do, however, is um, leave it like that. Just leave it. Just leave it as f divided by g. Okay. And um, obviously, our final answer here uh, has some limitations to it. Obviously, x cannot be 1 or negative 1 because 1 squared minus 1 is 0 and negative 1 squared minus 1 is 0. So if I draw my number line, I have to exclude the negative 1 and the positive 1. So just like the first example, or oh, one of the examples on the first page, I should say, I think example number 2, um, basically, that number and that number have to be taken out of the domain. So if you draw it on a number line, you have one, two, three sections, which means that the answer domain will also have three sections. So if we look at just the left side, we have negative infinity to negative one, that's here. The central section is from negative infinity to, or sorry, negative one to positive one, that's that one. And the right hand section is from one to positive infinity. So you'd get the domain that looks like that.